Okay, so today I'm gonna to share with you my top settings that I choose to change initially when I get a new MacBook Pro, whether it's a MacBook Pro like this one, the new one, or any MacBook Pro for that matter. If you're a new user or an old user, hopefully there's something here for you that you find helpful. And if it does, feel free to share and like this video, okay? So let's get right into it. Let's start with the trackpad. Go to System Preferences, open that up, and go to your trackpad, all right? Once you open, tap to click, make sure that is on. And that's when you tap your trackpad and it becomes a registered click uh, instead of actually pressing down. So that just makes the whole experience a lot more fluid. Now, if you wanna adjust your track speed and click feedback firmness, uh, you can adjust it here, but usually I'll leave it as it is. I slightly turn it up a little bit just so that I can do a complete across the screen swipe. So that's up to you, right? Force click, that's always on with haptic feedback. Basically, if you press it down hard enough, there's a second layer of feedback, uh, which is great. Now, more gestures. This is usually turned off. App Expose, turn that on so you swipe down with four fingers and it shows you App Expose, okay? Another thing is a lot of people tend to click and then drag with your mouse. It's a lot troublesome, right? Go to Accessibilities, go to the left and go down to your pointer controls, right? Go to Trackpad Options and then click on Enable Dragging. And you can choose either with drag log or without drag log. Usually I do three finger drag. Click on that and basically with three fingers, you can drag and you can drag your files across as well. So super easy, super intuitive. I don't know why Mac didn't turn that on at the very beginning. And let's go to the menu at the bottom. And what you do is there's a little arrow here. You can turn that up, can you see that, right? You can drag it down, right? So minimize it. I like to keep it small so it's nice and clean um, and then keep it very minimal. And if you wanna remove an app, say DaVinci, I'm just gonna drag it and then it's gone, right? If you wanna put it back in, uh, you can just drag it and then Put it back in. You might have an extra bar on the right. Basically, that's what your recently opened applications. Uh, down here, click on Dock and Menus, and then Show Recent Application in Dock. You turn that on, so all my recent apps are open, right? So I've opened Quick Player just to record my screen. But if I turn this off, it removes that dock and it just keeps everything clean and gives it more real estate. Uh, by default, we've also got automatic hide and show menu by the very top. What that does is just let me show you. This is Safari, right? If you do full screen it's gonna hide my menu by the very top, right? I think this is what Apple did to really hide the notch, uh, but yeah, you can turn it on, turn it off, but I leave it as it is. A lot of people like to have it automatically hide the dock as well, so minimize it uh, or leave it on up to you, but that is always there. And you can also leave it on the left, right, or the bottom, okay? So by that, basically what I mean is you can have it on the left, bottom, or the right. And since we're in the dock menus bar, and now on the top right, you can see I have a percentage on my battery. A lot of people like to have the percentage. Now it's not actually in the battery function. Where it is, it's in the dock and menus. Down here, click on batteries and then show percentage. Turn that off. Now, you can see here, I don't have a search bar logo on the top, right? My finder is not here, okay? And you're wondering, where is my finder? Well, I've actually removed it from my menu bar. You can actually turn it on just by going to here, uh, spotlight finder and then show you menu bar right how do you remove it well you can remove it like this alternatively if you want to remove something from your status bar all you have to do like you said you can't drag it but you can hold command hold on to your finder and then remove it's gone right you don't really need to find out the top i feel like it's an unnecessary since the shortcut is command space and it just pops up and if you want to change the position likewise hold command and you can adjust the position now you can see here I have a sound bar, right? I can adjust the volume and you're wondering why do you have a sound bar? You can adjust it with your quick keypad. Well, I have this because usually I have a lot of Bluetooth advice. So once you have that, you can actually see all the Bluetooth advice and you can switch between them and adjust the sound accordingly for both of the devices. Go to notifications, there's a sound right here. Click on it and then drag it on top. Simple. Now, speaking of Finder, let's go to Finders here. I have a lot of files. So let me go to, say, my actual folder here. Definitely turn this on, View, Status Bar, and then on the bottom it says how many files are in this folder and how much space that's left on your drive. So super helpful uh, just to give you a status update. Now, I've also got View, Path, and that basically tells me where I am in my folders and I can actually quick click and it access all of my files just like that. Now, on my left, there is my Status Bar. Uh, what you do is go to here, Preferences, 
Uh, go to sidebar and here are all your sidebar options. Now you can adjust this of course to yourself. I like to turn them all on because I have quick access to all of these as well as my own laptop here. Speaking of laptop, you can see I've renamed my laptop. How do I do this? Very simple, right? Go to system preferences, go down to sharing, and then here is your computer name. It comes to default as something like George's MacBook Pro. I think it doesn't do this laptop justice given how much it costs. So I'm gonna name it M1 MacBook Pro, one terabyte, 32 gig. Just so that everyone knows, right? Hey. And once you're done, there you go. Your location is renamed and you can see that's what your laptop is called. Now, another thing here is how I keep my desktop clean. Uh, as you can see, I have it organized in stacks. Now, how do I do that? Now, all you gotta do is right click or double click on your trackpad and use stacks. Now, if you unclick that, you can see it's kind of messy. Use stacks and that looks super clean. I'm sure you take a lot of screenshots. I do as well, uh, you know, command shift. Three takes a full screenshot and it appears on the right. When I take a screenshot, you can see there's a floating window. It takes about four to five seconds and it's kind of annoying before it then appears on the desktop and then you can actually use it. How do I remove that? Well, very simple. Use Command Shift 5 to turn on this option. Click on Show Floating Thumbnails, unclick that, and then once you take a screenshot, it will appear straight on your desktop. Now the last one is Safari's. Now you can see my Safari is very colorful, very minimal. Yours might be different. Now to get this, click on the settings on the bottom right, click on this. Usually all of this is checked, so just turn them off, turn all of them and just leave the ones that you like. And then if you want a background, just click on this and then choose a background of your liking. And the very top, you can see I've got a couple of tabs. Now to have a tab, uh, all you gotta do is just go to a site that you want or a bookmark you like and hold and drag and put on the left and that saves as a tag. And if you want to remove that, just unpin and there you go, it's gone. Tags are really like kind of shortcuts. Now speaking of shortcuts, you can click on the sidebar and it opens up all of these little sidebars. And with the Mac OS Monterey, it's actually there's a new feature where you can tab group, right? So basically, if you're looking up a specific website, so to say, right? And there's a lot of pages opened up and your parents comes in and you're like, oh no, right? You can save those tabs under a nickname, right? I've got one saved up. This is basically just a couple of websites of, you know, Chinese websites. Uh, and then when your parents come in, just click on the normal page and you're back to the original tab. You can kind of keep tabs of all your most visited uh, websites for school all right, or for work and then into its separate tab and then kind of save it for quick access later on. And you could click on this and you're back into it. Okay, well, I think that's it. Uh, hopefully that was insightful. Those are my most initial used settings that I do on my Mac OS or any Mac. Feel free to share with all your friends. Make sure they are just as productive as you are. And if there's anything that I missed, feel free to leave a comment. I would love to learn more. Um, but yeah, do leave a like. I have more Mac OS tests and feedback coming up soon. So stay tuned. I'm George, see you next time. Peace.